All right, we're starting the dumpster hallway. Whoa! <laughs> we are so excited for yeah. this part of our adventure. The dumpster goes from about 18 miles east of Dawson City, Yukon, up to Inuvik in the Northwest Territories, past the Arctic Circle. Uh, it's 476 miles to Inuvik, and then another 90 miles to Tuktoyuktuk, where the Beaufort Sea, the Arctic Ocean is, and we are going there. Yay! Yay! <laughs> You've only been able to drive there since? 2017, I 2017. think. 2017. Yeah. The last 90 miles, the road is new. Yeah. Uh, previously, you can only drive there on uh, the ice roads in yeah. the winter. So, yeah. Anyway, we're excited about we taking excited. our little uh, wee roll camper up to the Arctic Ocean. Yeah, we are. Yay. Oh, yay. <laughs> we found that visiting the Northwest Territories Visitor Center in Dawson City to be super helpful. They have up-to-the-minute weather, road conditions. They have advice about your rig. When we were there, the lady working in there advised us to get right to Tuktoyuktuk, that there was going to be four days of <laughs> summer and then come back down the road and hit the sites on the way. The road conditions on the Dempster vary. It is 546 miles of gravel, except for six miles between the airport at Inuvik and Inuvik. That's paved. And it is everything from washboard to cobblestones to potholes, <laughs> the size of which uh, you've never seen, and washouts. So you need to be careful, stay off the shoulders, the shoulders can be eight to 10 feet in some places and they're soft because they're trying to protect the permafrost from melting. So there really are no shoulders. If you get on the shoulder, you're going down, sideways, off the road. We found that driving the path of least resistance because there is so little traffic and you can very often see far ahead and far behind you that wherever the lane is, whether it be on the right, or in the middle, um, or on the left, that that's the road you should take. Lots of dust, oh my goodness, dust, dust, dust. We found that slowing down and driving slow and, and even perhaps coming to a stop when vehicles were coming from the opposite direction will really help you in the saving of your windshield. We also um, slowed down for both motorcycles and bicycles because the road was dry and it was, the dust was just crazy. Uh, what should you bring? Well, you definitely need good tires with plenty of tread, full size, a full size spare, a jack, tire plugs, air compressors. Um, and we found that airing down the tires gave us a little bit smoother of a ride. We'd also suggest a toe strap, lots of tools. You might not need them, but you have them if you do. Flares, engine oil and other fluids. And you have to be prepared to spend the night if you break down or have a, a, a flat that can't be repaired. There isn't anybody patrolling the road. Road crews, if one happens to pass you, usually have satellite phones and they will, you know, call uh, a wrecker or, you know, whatever for you. But it could be the next afternoon before they get to you, depending on where they're coming from and where you are on the road. And um, folks will stop to help if they can. Everybody, uh, if someone's pulled over and doesn't, you know, wave at you and indicate that they're not in distress, um, they'll go by. But, but if you need help, people, people will stop. And there's help available at like Dawson City, Eagle Plains, and Inuvik. And that's 546 miles of road. So you really do, um, need to be prepared to spend some time on the road if in fact you have to. Um, on the way up the road at kilometer 71 and a half is the Tombstone Territorial Park uh, in the Yukon Territory. 
and it has this great little pamphlet about the road, about the Dempster Highway. So the road is, the road is tough and it's a long way. <laughs> As you're on it, you might be like, oh my God, I can't believe we're doing this. But it is so beautiful and so diverse and just like no place I, you know, we'd ever been. Just absolutely, I don't know, tranquil, but it's tough. And the road to Eagle Plains, which is kind of considered the halfway point Eagle Plains, is the toughest. It might make you feel like it's going to defeat you. But truly, the rest of the way is not as bad and might even be considered pretty okay. Of course, it was dry when we were there. And you know, if it's wet, that road is slippery as can be. So we were really lucky that it was dry. Um, but once, it almost seemed like once you got to the Northwest Territories, the road was better. There are some uh, privies on the road, but again, because you can see on, in, on most of the road for quite a ways in front of you and quite a ways behind you, you can just um, stop, <laughs> you know, try to pull over, but, you know, stay out of the shoulder and put your flashers on and, you know, just kind of kind of take a natural break right there on the on the side of the road, uh, which is probably um, what you'll have to do more than once. <laughs> there is lodging. There's lodging at Eagle Plains, Inuvik, and Tuktoyaktuk. Uh, but there are also campgrounds, uh, several campgrounds along the way. A lot of times, um, on a lot of these roads in Canada and Alaska, you can just pull over if there's a place you can pull off the road with your camper uh, and camp there. But on the, on the Dempster, there were fewer of those than we thought there would be. The road, like I said, the road, the road is tough and it requires serious mental concentration. You know, there'll be uh, potholes that are 18 inches in diameter and 18 inches deep or um, rocks the size of your fist or rocks the size of a basketball. So you really you have to be at the top of your game. And it's a long road. It's a long 546 miles at 20 and 25 miles an hour, um, 10 miles an hour in a couple of spots. So I think our advice would be don't try to do it in one day. Don't even try to get to Inuvik in one day because that's just so far. You know, we took three days getting to Tuck. We went a little past the Arctic Circle and camped at the Yukon's last territorial campground. And um, then we spent the night at the a territorial campground in Northwest Territories. And then the next morning we got up to Tuck and, and camped in Tuck. Now we only took two days on the way back. Uh, let's see, so you gotta, you gotta be on your game. There is gas and food at, at Eagle Plains, which is the first place to get gas, Fort McPherson, Inuvik, and Tuck. So you need to, you know, plan accordingly, but it's, you know, you can make it work. Eagle Plains is 229 miles in, so you can certainly get gas there. Fort McPherson is 342 miles Inuvik is 457 and Tuck is 546. Also, you should bring some cash. The lady at the Northwest um, Territory Visitor Center in Dawson City advised us that we needed to bring some, that most of the places in Tuck Toyuk Tuck would not take a card. And that within the week that we were there, the machines went down. One of the construction crews working on the road cut the lines. And so Eagle Plains, the first place you can stop and get gas, was without their credit card machine for 11 hours. And people were hanging out. So bring you enough cash, I guess, at least for a fill up. Um, the kilometer posts are 
very frequent in the Yukon, on the Yukon Territory part of the tra on road, um, but they're pretty sparse in the Northwest Territories. I want to say the book said something like every five kilometers, and some of those are also missing. And, um, you know, you get to cross two ferries, you get to go across from south to north, the Peel River Ferry first, which is a cable ferry. So that was kind of fun and quick. It's very, it's not very wide. And then we had the ferry at um, the Mackenzie River, which is, um, you know, a ferry that operates under its own power. We did see a Sprinter van having trouble getting off the ferry. He was too long, low bike rack on the back of the van, and it got hung up. And so that leads me into talking about the type of vehicles we saw. We saw uh, lots of uh, Class Cs. We didn't see a, too many Class As. In fact, we were trying to remember if we saw any, but I think they could make it if they were just, they obviously make it. They take them across those ferries all the time. We just didn't happen to see any. But I think you have to think about how long you are and what you might and your clearance. But the ferries run almost all day, like 9:45 a.m. to 12:45 a.m. There isn't any cell service on the road, with the exception of at those two ferries and um, Tuck and Tuck Toyak Tuck and Anuvik. I think there is service at Eagle Plains, but I think you're going to pay for it. Speaking of Eagle Plains, we had really decent meals there. We were very pleasantly surprised, and the price wasn't bad. We really enjoyed the radio station out of Inuvik, which for the most part was in the First Nations language of the people of that area. Um, so that was kind of fun to... To, when we were within range to turn that on and um, the, and they were playing pretty decent music too and um, so it was kind of fun to listen uh, to the language. When you get to Taktoyaktuk, they have camping right on their little spit that um, is right on the Arctic Ocean. So we camped in Taktoyaktuk on the spit where um, traditionally the First Nations people have fished from. They have um, smoked and uh, filleted their fish right there on the spit. And in the beginning, the first couple of years, when the road was first opened, people were coming up and kind of just kind of camping willy-nilly where they could. Um, the city finally got wise, and they have created, I don't know, I think maybe there's 15 or 16 numbered campsites on the spit right on the Beaufort Sea, and um, probably six or seven more places that you can camp. They still expect you to pay, but that you can camp that are not numbered, uh, but are headed toward in ta toward town, but still on the spit. They um, they're 60 Canadian a night, and it's for the town. I think that equals maybe 42, 45 Amer U.S. dollars. Um, but the money goes to the town, and, and we were happy to pay it. And um, we were right on the Arctic Ocean, so you can't beat that. You cannot swim right there. You're not supposed to get in the water there because it is the traditional fishing grounds of the people of Tuktoyaktuk. So they ask that you don't swim there, that you go over to their beach, which is not very far. I mean, Tuktoyaktuk is a tiny little place, and um, get in the ocean, if you so desire, to get into the Arctic at their beach, which was fun. When else are you going to have a chance to get in the Arctic? And there she is. The Arctic Ocean.